The Centers for Disease Control reports one in every six Americans, 48 million people, get sick from eating contaminated food or drinks. Some bacteria present in food may grow if those foods are held at improper temperatures. Holding cold foods below 41 degrees Fahrenheit and hot foods above 135 degrees Fahrenheit minimizes the growth of bacteria, helping to prevent your customers from getting sick. The only way to know if your foods are being held at the proper temperature is to physically check them using one of the many styles of probe thermometers available. Ensure that your thermometer is accurately calibrated by filling a container with ice and just a little water. Make sure the ice isn't floating or the water won't get cold enough for proper calibration. Your thermometer must read 32 degrees Fahrenheit in the ice water or you need to adjust it by following the manufacturer's guidelines. Now let's talk about cold holding. Any foods that are required to be in temperature control must be kept at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder at all times, except during necessary times of preparation, such as cutting meat, slicing tomatoes, or grating cheese. No matter how busy your business is, how many times you've gone in and out of the cooler, or how many times you've opened and closed a lid, your cold foods must be at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder at all times. There are several things that can affect cold holding temperatures and your equipment's ability to keep food at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Take notice of how each piece of equipment works and consider that air must flow throughout the entirety of the unit to keep all foods in areas of the unit at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. For instance, this region unit has only one fan at the very top above five shelves containing food that must be kept at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder at all times. Notice the upper right shelf is well organized with space in between products, allowing air to flow freely to the lower shelves, keeping all foods in the right side at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Now take a look at the upper left shelf. Notice how crowded the shelf is. While the foods on the top shelf are at 39 degrees Fahrenheit, they are completely blocking the cold air from making it to the foods on the lower shelf raising the food temperature to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It is often overlooked in the food industry, but as you can see, airflow is a really important part of proper cold holding temperatures. Putting too hot of foods into a cold holding unit to cool is another common mistake which often results in food temperatures rising above 41 degrees Fahrenheit. While refrigeration units are very useful tools for rapidly cooling foods, care must be taken to ensure that they are as cold as possible before placing in a refrigeration unit. Take the time to watch the rapid cooling video to find appropriate methods of cooling without risking the safety of cold refrigerated foods. Make sure your foods are as close to or below 41 degrees Fahrenheit before placing them into the cooler. While we're talking about how hot foods can affect food temperatures, let's talk about how the air temperature in your kitchen can do the same. Most experienced cooks know that opening and closing cold holding equipment leads to warmer food temperatures. Although it is a reason for food temperatures to rise above 41 degrees Fahrenheit, it is certainly no excuse. Put thought into the workflow of your kitchen and take the time to think of ways to minimize the length of time your cold holding equipment is open. Food deliveries need to be put away as quickly as possible. Many kitchens make the mistake of propping a cooler door open for long periods of time, raising the air temperature in the cooler and thus raising the temperatures of the food in the unit. This not only allows for any bacteria present to multiply, it also forces your cooling unit to work harder than it should, which shortens its lifespan. For cold top low boy units such as this one, it's common practice for many kitchens to leave the lid open during busier periods. While most units are able to keep food temperatures at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder for short periods of time, it is difficult for most units to maintain proper temperatures through the entire busy period. It is recommended that whenever you are finished with foods in the cooler for even a minute to shut the lid until it is absolutely necessary to open it again. This problem can be made more difficult to manage in a smaller kitchen or a more crowded kitchen where cold holding units are in close proximity to hot equipment such as grills, fryers, or ovens. If this is the case with your kitchen setup, even more care must be taken to keep doors and lids shut as much as possible. Some establishments even find it necessary to place ice bags on top of food when their equipment just cannot keep up. Unfortunately, sometimes the equipment we have in our kitchens, like all technology and machinery, gets too old to properly work. If you find this to be the case with a piece of equipment, you need to either get it replaced or find another use for it. 
If you find a piece of equipment that isn't working properly and cannot keep foods at 41 degrees Fahrenheit, you also need to find a safe place to keep foods until you fix the problem. This usually means moving the foods to another cooler, or if it's a food you need to use often, an ice bath is another solution. Ice baths are also used by establishments if they simply do not have the equipment to fit their needs. For example, this establishment uses salsa and sour cream throughout their busy times and wants it easily accessible, but they need to keep it cold. Make sure the container you're using for your ice bath is as deep as the foods you need to keep cold. It's essential that the level of ice is as high or higher than the level of the food inside the containers. Notice how the level of salsa in the ice bath is higher than the level of the ice. Now notice what the thermometer says when the temperature of the salsa is taken above the level of the ice. 55 degrees Fahrenheit, too warm to safely hold salsa, and a temperature at which bacteria will grow if present. Now notice what the thermometer says if we take the temperature at the level of the ice. 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and only an inch lower than where it was at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Ice baths also require frequent attention to ensure the ice doesn't melt and foods stay at the required temperature, 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Be sure to assign someone the task of routinely topping off the level of ice and also checking the temperatures of the food in the ice bath to ensure they are maintained at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Now that we've covered cold holding temperatures and procedures, it's time we've moved on to hot holding. Just like keeping foods at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder keeps bacteria from multiplying, keeping foods at 135 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter also prevents bacteria growth. While it's true that keeping hot foods hot tends to be easier and less prone to problems than keeping foods cold, there are a number of things you must keep in mind. There are different types of equipment used to keep many foods hot, hot boxes, steam tables, heat lamps, and even more, depending on the type of food. Regardless of the food you're holding or the equipment you're using, it's absolutely necessary to maintain the temperature at 135 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. Remember to use your calibrated food thermometer to check your food temperatures throughout the day to ensure adequate hot holding. Many people think that their hot holding equipment is adequate for both heating foods and holding foods. While there is some equipment designed for both purposes, Nearly all equipment is designed to hold foods hot only after they've been properly heated. Placing cold foods directly into the steam table or other hot holding equipment often leaves foods in the danger zone for too long, prompting the growth of any foodborne bacteria that may be in the food. Another common mistake people make is not turning their hot holding equipment on long enough before they place food into it. No matter how long or how hot you heat foods before placing into equipment, if that equipment isn't hot yet, the foods are likely to drop below 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Make it a routine to get all hot holding equipment up and running well before filling with foods. Lids are one of the most overlooked and underused kitchen tool, yet most work very well to keep both hot and cold foods at proper temperatures. Many businesses have at least one or two more popular menu items that take time to prepare from scratch and therefore are made in large batches and held hot until sold. Most cooks know that foods kept in hot liquids generally have no problem keeping their temperatures hot as long as the equipment is turned up high enough. Chunkier foods are often much more difficult to keep hot regardless of how high the equipment is turned without additional care, such as placing lids on them. While having to keep certain foods covered may seem to slow down production initially, after a little practice, your staff and food service will be improved, and often foods will be more desirable for your customers. Some establishments decide that while most of the foods in their steam table are at acceptable temperatures, others are too hot and dry out, so they try to stack two pans like this. This may work occasionally, especially if you use lids, but it also has the tendency to lower food temperatures below 135 degrees Fahrenheit. If you find that temperatures have dropped below 135 degrees Fahrenheit for just a short time, you must rapidly reheat the food to 165 degrees Fahrenheit and adjust the equipment. The only way to know your foods are always at the proper temperature is to check them routinely throughout the day, every day, and use different equipment and or procedures if they are not. Many establishments make the mistake of trusting air temperature thermometers, or the even bigger mistake of using their hands to check temperatures. The palms of your hands are around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 
making it very difficult to tell the difference between 41 degrees Fahrenheit and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It is essential to use a calibrated food thermometer several times throughout the day to physically check the food temperatures throughout your entire kitchen. The establishments that are most successful in keeping foods at the proper temperatures set up a log book. There are endless ways to set up a log. Just be sure that each entry includes the date, time, and food that was checked and the location. Many businesses also include a space for the initials of the person who conducted the check for accountability reasons. It is recommended that one or two people are held responsible for monitoring and maintaining food temperatures every day. It is important to check food temperatures first thing every morning to make sure no equipment malfunctioned overnight. It is recommended to also check all food temperatures before and after each busy period to notice how temperatures change throughout the day and to also check before leaving each night. If cold food rises above 41 degrees Fahrenheit or hot food drops below 135 degrees Fahrenheit for four hours or longer, then it should be discarded for your customer's safety. Now that you know the temperature guidelines and things that often affect food temperatures, you need to put systems into place to ensure foods are at proper temperatures at all times. Please contact your local health department for additional information and training.